starting point is it turned to a business, that is to say like banking, financing, IP, etc. Players of professional uh, team sport are deemed as regular employees, regular clubs had turned to stock companies and uh, needless to say that you know there is a need for contracts and uh, big business, big money is involved. And so uh, that's more or less the reason why we are talking about a new area in the framework of which we need legal advice. Isn't it a very highly regulated sector, not by the government so much, but by governing bodies of sport? Well, exactly. This derives from the fact that we are talking about the so-called self-regulatory power of association, which derives mainly from a constitutional law. In other words, every association is entitled to set up their own, or their own rules. And that's why uh, this is a big challenge. We are talking about the tension between this self-regulatory power of association to set up their own rules and on the other hand uh, regularly or fundamental rights. Some of the regulators we like to say that um, no no we're immune from law we don't we don't have the law doesn't apply to us we're special does that is that right or not? Uh, to a certain extent uh, for instance take this vicarious liability issues uh, of hooligans there is a rule which says you know the the clubs are responsible for the improper contact of supporters regardless if they are at fault or not and this is a very debatable thing Our athletes as well as other parties are trying to challenge this kind of rule saying it's contrary to fundamental rights that uh, you have to prove fault in any case in in order to impose a sanction on somebody already you've talked about constitutional law criminal law, corporate law, commercial law, public law and administrative law. Is, is there a sports law or is it just every branch of law there is? There is a business with specific uh, criterions, characteristics, but it's not a field as such. It's uh, definitely, as you indicated it, a cross-sectional matter. And obviously Bird and Bird organises itself on sectors and it does that to be client-facing and to be organised the way the world organises itself. But sport really is almost a self-defining sector. One of the unique things about you and your background is that um, you're a member of the Court of Arbitration for Sport and that's uh, effectively the Supreme Court for International Sport. Can you give us uh, an idea even of just the subject matter, the range of things you have to deal with as a CAS arbitrator? Well, it goes from underwater hockey. I was involved in one of, the, in one of these match-fixing cases. Uh, doping, for instance, transfer issues, um, problems of sponsoring agreement, regular contractual issues, so as, as, work as well, as, well as eligibility issues. Right, it was such a spread of work you said in sports law, and it seems like all of those cases come up to the case. It goes back to Samaran. She came upon the idea to say, hey, we, there is a need of harmonized rules in order to uh, avoid, uh, you know, different rules which fosters, you know, the fair competition. But uh, we need also a central uh, court of arbitration for sport, uh, which issues uh, consistent case law. It's been confirmed by the Swiss courts that that's exactly what it is, and it has that power and that respect in the, in the eyes of the law. It was really exciting to see how efficient a dispute resolution within sport work in favor to all stakeholders. It's competitive, you know, both parties, three parties are fighting against each other. For instance, eligibility issues, somebody has been thrown out before his crucial raid due, due to a doping rumor or something like that, he is able to take a lawyer within the night and then uh, we are able with all the facilities which were uh, on the spot to set up a hearing within three hours and to issue a judgment. I think um, the, the chemistry more or less of the sport family to re resolve disputes uh, quick and efficient is the key for such efficiency. One of the things that CAS does well is to develop the, what they call the Lex Sportiva, so principles from which apply in a common law and a civil law system globally, because the rules of sport have to apply globally, so the legal principles do. Certainly, it seems to be a, let's say, a gradual process of people finding out these issues and resolving them as they go along. I think 
judgments of the UK, as I, as I recall, and also in the US, you see sometimes the key uh, sentence, sport is different. Sport is different in many uh, terms uh, and in many regards, and so uh, that's probably the reason why we, are, we can talk more and more about a kind of Lex Sportiva. It's uh, sometimes, how do you call it, hardcore legal issues, you know, the tension between, for instance, self-regulatory power uh, deriving from constitutional law on the one hand and for sure vocational freedom, fundamental personal rights, uh, free movement of capitals and all yeah. these things. Uh, this is really, uh, I think, no lex sportiva. Sometimes I said, I think you need uh, the smell of a locker room in order to resolve a case in, in front of CAS. But on the other hand, it, it comes down to antitrust law as well, because we are talking about a monopolistic structure due to the pyramid. So, you know, the only way to get access to acknowledged uh, competition is to sign these rules, to, to yeah. be subject to these rules. And that's why we are talking about antitrust law. That's one of the key issues in front of the sport arbitration panels. And that, I suppose, to take us back full circle, you need these lawyers who will understand these issues of antitrust, commercial law, corporate law and so on, but be able to understand, sometimes they call it the specificities of sport. Sometimes, I must admit, I'm not able to resolve cases in front of CAS without, without a specialist from a special area, antitrust or uh, IP also, or labor law, while well, I'm a certified specialist in labor law, but that's Exactly, um, that's exactly, I think, the mission to be seen and to be accomplished or to be pursued. Is there something that the CAS brings for the people who have their disputes and need to bring them to the CAS? Is there something particular that CAS offers? It's quick and not that expensive. That is to say, it's a tool to get a quick and final judgment. We, according to the rules, uh, under certain circumstances, have to, as CAS arbitrators, have to issue an award within three months or four months, uh, depending on the case, etc. So there are a lot of tools which gives the parties who are looking for judgment, a decision. Uh, there is a platform to get a quick and competent judgment, that's more or less the key and the reason why it is well accepted. Quick and authoritative resolution. Exactly. Yeah.